Money makers, it's a shell. These container homes have been all over social media for the past few weeks. So you know Team KRM had to come and check them out for ourselves. Let's go take a look around. My name is Martella Brown, sales rep here at Kingston Logistics Center. This is one of our container homes. We have six models. The first one is a stratum, which is 20 foot, one bedroom. 160 square feet is 2.3. Twin stratum, which is another one bedroom using a 40 foot door, which gives you 320 square foot, is 3.8. The mod, which is a 40 foot, which gives you two bedroom, is 320 square feet as well, because it uses a 40 foot is 4.1. The Madonna, which is the one at the stage, which is here, it is a 40 foot and a 20 foot, which gives you two bedrooms, 480 square foot of space at 8.5. Comes complete with a deck and deck roof. The Imperial, which is the fifth one, uses two 40 foot, you get three bedrooms out of that, 640 square foot, and it's 10 million. For the Twin Imperial, you use a 240 foot and a 20 foot. You get three bedrooms as well, and it's 800 square foot, which is 12.5. We have strategically partnered with local companies. Quartz for furnishings, elegant creative design for glass and windows, alternative power for solar power, and Stephen Jones landscaping for your beautiful greenery. They all come completed with insulation, wiring. It's ready to believe in it's a turnkey space when we're done. All right, guys, so there you have it. What do you think? Would you buy a container home? Why or why not? Let us know in the comments below. Let's get this money. All right, thank you so much, Tashel. I was just like vibing to the music. So Jason says, no nah, lie, I like it. But Elaine says, the price tag is crazy. So I want to hear what you think so far about what you're seeing from these container homes. But we're going to talk some more about it. Right now, I'm excited. Joining us to discuss, we have from Kingston Logistics Center, their business development and communications officer, Shereen Forbes, and Novlet Henry Matheson, who is the head of sales and special projects. Hi, Novlet. Hi, Shereen. Hi, Hi. Thanks for having us. How are you ladies doing? We're well. I'm <laughs> absolutely great. Barring all things equal, I am great. <laughs> yeah, so you're the hot topic for the past week or so. Container homes have been a hot topic all over social media, everybody talking about it. So you're in a good position right now when you are, you have a business and you're the talk of the town. Yes, we're, we're embracing and welcome all the tractions that we have been getting. Um, first of all, let me say hi to your viewers. And as I'm saying, yes, we welcome the traction that we've been getting from our launch. And um, we are happy to be out there um, providing this, giving this, con generating this conversation on what we have launched. But more so happy to be able to put this product out there, you know, to the Jamaican public. All right. So before you tell us about the container homes and this product, I, I won't say new product because you've been doing it for a while. But tell us about Kingston Logistics Center. So many people might not be familiar with your business. Who is Kingston Logistics Center? What do you guys typically do? Should I take it or miss now? Sure. <laughs> I know one of you can take it. Okay. Kingston Logistics Center is an all-inclusive logistics hub. Um, we deliver logistics to the public faster, easier, and smarter. Um, and our logistics solutions are extensive. We do, um, we offer stripping services for persons who have their container that they want to have examined by Jamaica Customs. We have a warehouse or two warehouses for personal effects and commercial cargo. Persons who come with their um, barrels and boxes and so on, they can also have their cargo stored at our um, warehouse. Um, beyond that, we offer container sales. We do contra container retrofitting. And as mentioned before, 
or container retrofitting um, was being done on a customization basis and mostly for commercial um, uh, premises, uh, commercial uh, offices, storage units, um, clinics, or, you know, um, police posts. That police kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting into the uh, container homes as just getting into the residential side of retrofitting. Um, we also offer free forwarding services, custom brokerage, everything that is related to logistics, we offer those services. So again, it's the all-inclusive logistics hub that offers you the services faster, easier, and smarter. And you've been doing this, like you said, for over 10 years already. A lot of people might not even realize that some of the offices that they, they visit are made from containers. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Um, we have been involved in the development of a lot of the um, of offices and projects that the the private sector has out um, container of container units from the private and the public sector. We have worked with major international companies to do container um, solutions. Again, a mm -hmm. lot of it is for office space, and so it's has been our mainstay for more than a decade. And therefore the transition now into residential was just a natural progression for us. What drove that transition? Was there, did you notice demand for these homes? Why you decided to, to start offering it for residential? Well, as it is, as you know, in Jamaica, there is, there is a great need for housing. You know, if you will observe just driving around in our, um, in the city, even you'll see that there's a need because there's a lot of um, quote unquote ghetto slums areas that you know we think people could be living in a more um, aesthetically well, pleasing, dignified, dignified yes. um, surrounding, you know. Yes. And so we're saying, why not? Why not use these to clean up these areas, you know? And so we have. But in addition to, to, to clean up the, the, the slums and get the areas, it can also, it's not for low income, it's not only for the destitute and homeless. It can be used also for um, the elites, you know, persons who have the word all to purchase a home, one or two, or even just for investment in terms of using them as Airbnbs, you know, the sky's is the limit for them. And so we recognize that there is a demand. And so we are making, we're, we're meeting that demand. So we already have a lot of questions and comments in our, in our chat, in our live chat. So let me start taking some of the questions from the audience from now, since I want to get to as many of them as possible. Jason wants to know, how are these houses wired for electricity? Well, typically like any um, regular conventional block and steel, Wooden, wooden houses, just a typical wiring of electric electricity. It's the wiring is pretty much done behind the insulation. Yeah. Yeah. It's not mounted on surface. So once you go in the space, you're not seeing any sort of wire sticking out. It's behind the, the insulation yeah. mm -hmm. and ready for connection uh, approved by um, a general elect electrician for to, in order for persons to make that connection to their power source, mainly in Jamaica to be JPS. Okay, so normal wiring, nothing different. Normal Sean, wiring. Mm -hmm. Sean says, can these containers support vertical expansion without it collapsing? So, okay, below upstairs and, you know. Absolutely, so absolutely, Kelido. Um, thank you for that question, Sean. Um, like, again, any conventional structure, you if you're going to go a second go in expand with a second level you have to ensure that your foundation is has that capacity to accommodate that that weight and so it's important to ensure that your foundation is built out as such so yes the short answer is yes yeah and i have seen two-story container offices i've even seen a three-story container office my brother used to work in one and I was like, oh, I didn't know they, they did that. So, yeah. Yes. You so, just wait, you just, you just stack another container on top. How does that work? 
Yeah, pretty much you just talk another one and talk. One Zero Foundation, as I mentioned, is has the capacity to accommodate the weight, um, considering that these containers are usually outfitted with a drywall finish, ceramic tiles or porcelain, whatever the customers choose. And of course, if it's a house setting, you're going to have your granite countertop or whatever type of material a customer chooses to use. So it's going to come with some weight. And so, of course, you're going to have persons also using the space. And so the foundation is, is very critical that the foundation has the capacity to accommodate that amount of weight that, we'll, that we will use to outfit the, the unit, as well as persons using the space. They're stackable because I don't know if you have been on the porch or even by, just by driving, if you're heading to Portmore side, you would see hundreds of containers stopped, stopped on the, the port. And um, they're so built, the position of how these containers are structured, they are stackable. So yes. Ah, you know, a question that I had, right? When I heard about container homes, I was like, cool. So if you move, you can just hitch up your container home <laughs> to a big truck and carry a house with you. But is that how it works? Like, is it, can you move it after you've put it down somewhere? Well, the, you know, well, the quick answer for a single unit, yes. You can actually do that because a typical container is, has a width of eight feet wide. And so um, that can just go on a flatbed or a truck head and you hook that up and take it to your location of, cho of, of choice. But when you go multiple, joining more than one units, it's not as simple, but it can be dismantled because they're welded together ultimately. And so, of course, they can be dismantled and then reassembled at another location. Okay, because so, I was yeah. also wondering that if, well, if we can just pick it up and move it, then somebody could tip your house. <laughs> no, not in that respect. <laughs> Nothing yes, that's, that's, really, that's an important thing as well for consideration, Kalila. Whilst you may be able to 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 um to transport it and to, to use it as a mobile option, if you were, for instance, seeking financing, then it's highly unlikely that someone would finance a mobile home like that. Mm -hmm. They would require that it be set in the foundation and rooted and grounded <laughs> so that. <laughs> Their investment will be safe. Therefore, if you are um, seeking financing from a financial institution, then it is quite likely that you would have to make it a permanent structure wherever your foundation is. Okay, so you build a foundation and you basically stick on the container home under the foundation. Yes. Like, is this yeah. properly, it's properly, okay. right. Sticking is not the term, um, Khalil. I'm trying to make it properly simple. a fix to the foundation by way of um, when you're building your, your foundation, you're going to leave out your, the steel coming out of ground. And then you're going to use um, a steel plate with some jade, jade bolts to affix that to the foundation. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then um, somebody nothing. cannot come overnight and, and cut it off and, and go. But certainly once you want to move it, it can be removed. Okay, cool. All right, so Big Kev says, great idea, long overdue for these container homes. Uh, who else? Uh, Old Harbor, Nano Sense says, the Old Harbor Fire Station in St. Catherine off South Street and Walker's Road were built out of containers. We have a question from Island Kid who wants to know, how hurricane-proof are these solutions given that we live in the tropics? Well, containers are built for sea, for, for sea conditions. Um, they are originally, you know, containers are built to be seaworthy. And being seaworthy means that it must be able to stand up to hurricanes, storms, um, monsoons, everything that you can imagine at sea, the containers are built to withstand that. They're made from curtain steel and it is already set up to withstand the rough weather conditions. Therefore, when it um, is used for a home, it is actually a very, very sturdy option. And I, and I dare say it would be a more sturdy option than some of the options that we have presently because it is already steel. It is already built for 
hurricane. Now, the, the, the only other thing would be to ensure that it is rooted and grounded properly in the foundation. And that is what we would be offering, you know, the solution in terms of how to set up your foundation to ensure that your container home is is um sturdy and and um sets in the in the ground and it's not going anywhere as Ms. Nelson said. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So more question. You mentioned that the containers are you know built for seed worthiness, right? And built with yes. that in mind, but they are also built, not the homes, the containers themselves are built for cargo, not people, right? Yes. So does it get really hot? in a container home? What is it like actually living in one? Yes, if you go in a, a, a container without it being retrofitted, yes, it's going to be hot. It is steel, and certainly steel attracts heat. But of course, once we retrofit it, um, we have different methodologies that we'll use to retire that heat. And so um, once you purchase one of our container, you will not have a heat concern. Um, like any typical um, other building, conventional building solution, if a space is locked up and you open it, yes, you're gonna, it's going to feel hot. But once you have that cross flow, flow ventilation coupled with our methodology of retarding the, the heat, no, you won't have a heat concern. And all our containers, container homes, or cycle container homes, or provision is there for air condition not saying you have to install an air condition to, to get that coolness because you don't need to because we have ample ventilation which will allow the space to cool readily okay so that answers a couple of questions that i see and comments that i see online so sean was saying imagine how hot the houses must be if concrete house hot imagine house made out of iron <laughs> answer that right? you know what sean sean i i dare you i dare you to come to King invite Sarah. him down shereen yes, I, listen i i'll bet your money and we can we can test it we can test it and test it for your view, viewers Kalila. so sean yeah. will come back and let you know right yes. jaja if it hot or not as a right. as a follow-up <laughs> Well, Jason also points out, he says, if these are solar powered, then the heat will not be a problem because you can afford air conditioning. And you have the option for solar. Um, our unit, model unit here now is um, powered up. It um, hosts, it can pretty much, it has a capacity for all lights, refrigerator, if you have a, a, a refrigerator, um, did I say stove with your television? Right. It's, um, it's, it's kind of powered up. And we have a part, we have a strategic partner, an um, alternative power source, power source, who will be able to come in and do an assessment depending on the capacity that you need to operate your space. Okay. And so also, also, to also to support that, yeah. Lila, um, alternative power along with some of our other strategic partners are offering special container home loans to support the access to the container homes. So alternative power, if you make a purchase of your container home, will be able to offer you a special discount on your um, solar um, power if you if you wanted to add that as an amenity to your unit. Likewise, Courts Jamaica Limited for you, for French and appliances, um, Stephen Jones Landscaping, Stephen Jones. Mm -hmm. landscaping and Elegant and Creative Designs. If you wanted to um, add further or, or upgrade with your windows and doors and um, rails, that kind of thing, they are also there to support. So we are in fact creating an ecosystem that will support um, hopefully every aspect that is needed for you to have a good container home and fully accessible to the market. So that starts to answer another question. A lot of people in the comments are asking about the price and some of them. So uh, Debbie says, I'm having a mixed feeling about the price. And then Troyan says, 140 foot, no, sorry. One 40 foot container is now roughly one mil. So what exactly are we getting other than just a container that costs four mil plus? So you're explaining that you actually retrofit it. So tell us yes. what all goes into the container, why it costs this much more than just a regular container that's not retrofitted is this is, is Sharon what's her name Sharon? Try Sharon. 
Troy. Well, try and browning. To answer your question, you um of uh, uh, one of um a viewer earlier asked if it was hot. And the question, the response to that was no, because once we um outfit it, it's it's not you you're not gonna have a heat concern. And in, in addition to just dealing with the heat, there are other materials that goes into retrofitting the unit. And I have to always refer to the conventional building that once you are going to outfit a container, it's pretty much the same thing goes into retrofitting a container as what would go into a conventional space because everybody wants it to be aesthetically pleasing, comfortable, and of course, the similar materials that are used as a finish is also used in outfitting a, a container. So you're not just going to get a, a hot box, no. <laughs> Yes, and to add to that, Troyan, I mean, we are offering upcycled container homes. We're not offering trailer trash solutions. Yes. Therefore, when we're finished, the home looks like a home that you would be happy to live in or happy to use as your investment solution. Many persons come in and see it as the perfect solution for an Airbnb. Um, so we're talking about the, the, the faucets. We're talking about tiling. So, toilets, face basin, windows, the doors, feel it. like there are so many things. And again, the heat retardant insulation, the drywall, the exterior, the paint, all of those things add up. If you were to go to the hardware right now and start really penciling it, you would see yep. how very quickly you're getting to the price tag that we're at. And as you rightly and said, the of the containers is also significant in the mix. Mm -hmm. So for persons who I've never had a realtor come and visit us and say that the prices are high. In fact, the realtors are usually like really, really impressed at the prices that we have for the container homes because they're familiar with the market and they know that this for what you're getting for the square footage, square footage. is a great deal. Yeah. Here's another common question in the chats right now. Kimari says, definitely interested. However, purchase of a container home, does that include the land also? No, um, no, the land is not included. You have to own land or at least, or, or lease land, because I, mean, I know you have that option out there where persons can lease land. So the land is not included. What we do, we build out the unit. So what we're offering is just the unit. Persons will have to have their land and build their foundation and all external works to include, of course, your sewage and, of course, um, have the unit ready. The unit will be electrically wired, ready for connection to your power source. So the short answer to that, you have to have your line. All right. Next question. We all know that metal rusts. How long would a container home last? A typical container can last up to 30 years. But of course, like again, like any conventional space, I mean, we all, I mean, as part of our culture, we, every Christmas, we're painting our houses and we are changing this, we're, we're, we're doing all sorts of things to, to, to make your house look appeasing, you know, to pass it by and, and of course yourself. So similar to how we do that for traditional spaces, the same thing will obtain, maintenance is important but a typical container can last up to 30 years without any sort of maintenance. So imagine you doing your maintenance, you can get uh, a good service life out of it. And also you would have noticed that the facades are added. Right, so I was about to add that. An additional lifespan. Protection, yeah. right, right. What's added? The facade that we, we have on the old exterior that in itself also will assist in, you know, keeping, not exposing the metal so much to the elements. So that will also preserve, right. preserve the, the unit. Yes. Richard wants to know, how does the cost of a container home compare to building a conventional home of comparable size? Richard, have you seen the housing market recently? <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> Listen, 
Let's say he's the one, Richard. Maybe, maybe we should ask Sherine. Sherine, let's yes. ask Richard to do yes, his Richard. Come back and tell us. Yes, for a two. We're not going to respond to Richard. We're going to ask Richard. Yes. A little research. You can even just go online now and, and, and come back before yes. Sherine. Yes. And Sherine closes our show. Yes. Come on, I want you guys to tell us. Well, I guess it depends no, on we're where you're going to allow Richard right? to do his homework. No, Richard, Richard is my husband, by the way. And oh, we're actually yes, in the yes. process of buying a house. It's even so. better. It's even better. So, so I think he knows. So you want you to give the people the information. To the, the quest to, to the numbers. All right, so so in, in, in terms of purchasing a house or a home, the first thing is going to be the location. So the location will matter in terms mm -hmm. of what is the, the, the final figure. But the market now, um, you're looking at uh, apartment complexes or two-bedroom apartments in the 36, 38, 40 million dollars um, range. Certainly in Kingston, um, going out of Kingston, you may be able to get some bit better. But then for a, a, a brand new setup that is a turnkey solution like what we're offering. There's nothing on the market that could compare to mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess a lot of it has to do with the cost of the land, so where you decide to put it. So yes, um, yes. yeah, land is a big factor in housing. It's a so big factor. Up, if you're buying a trying to find a lot in Kingston Six, which first of all I don't even know if that exists. Yes, it is. <laughs> it it is. Not alone is gonna drive up your cost. Yes. But there, but there, there are persons there. There are persons who have a, a lot of land all over Jamaica, not just in Kingston, and especially if you're going to use it as a as an investment, like for Airbnb, it's it's something for those persons to look at and utilize those land that been sitting there that has been willed by their um, grandmother, great grandparents, that sort of thing. And just to utilize those those lands that are out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple more questions. There are so many questions in the chat. Clearly, there is a lot of interest in these <laughs> container homes because the chat is just on fire this evening. So I'm going to take a couple more. Christopher says, what record do you have on the containers to determine the contents that it transpired? Do you have the complete history of the container? No, we, we're not the shipping line, so we really don't have the history on a container. But what we know is that contain, most containers are used to transport consumable items like um, dry goods, frozen goods. They're used to transfer food in general, consumable items. So we don't have a concern about that. And then Ryan wants to know, what's the cost to transport the container home? So say Mandeville, I guess Ryan is in Mandeville. What transportation would be an additional cost, wouldn't it? Be an additional. Indeed. And do you definitely. provide the transportation? Yes, we, we do provide the transportation. So you need a you need a truck to transport the unit from our facility to the destination or the the location of choice. And of course you're gonna need a crane to position it on the foundation. Uh, just to give you uh, an idea for costs, not casting stone because you know inflation is always on the rise. Uh, for that, you could be looking at about two hundred and twenty thousand Jamaican dollars plus GCT. And like I said, that comes with a crane to spot it. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at some of the final comments. I don't have any time for more questions, but lots and lots of comments here in the chat. Michelle said, I would love to own one. James says, bro, God, live in a concrete house. So that my want to. <laughs> Russell says, they're nice. Nothing is wrong with that. Jason says, Americans live in trailer homes. They even have trailer communities. This is, I, I don't know if I would compare these to trailer homes, though. Would you? They're upcycled. Can I say upcycled? And you will see it in our pictures. You will see it on social media homes. platforms and so on. We have made the deliberate decision to um to position our products as a bit, you know, really something that is nice and dignified. We heard the concerns, we heard what the market needed in terms of a solution that is an um, affordable solution. Affordable. Nobody wants to live in a trailer park. And therefore, mm -hmm. we didn't want to invest our money either 
in a trailer park solution. So our, our solution is really quite attractive. Um, and we're very, very proud of what we have. We are proud of our product. We yes. are indeed proud of our product and we stand by our product. All right, well, how can people contact you? Lavar says he wants to know the price for two containers. Retrofitted Lavar or regular? <laughs> like, well, he must be asking about retrofitted. So your prices a are- home. A two, a two bedroom he's speaking to? I suppose so. He says two containers, I don't know. Well, he has to well, we two solutions. The prices yes. are between 2.3 to 12.5. So it depends on which of the container homes he would be speaking to. We also do um, the sale of containers. So if he wants a uh, go to mm -hmm. he can email us at sales at klcjamaica.com for mm -hmm. the um, oh, quotation. quotation. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, let me take this last, last question. I said I was going to end it, but this is taking stock. We always ask business questions on this show. So Levar says, let's talk IPO because I see this company going big. Once we get the NHT on board with the mortgages, I don't know if any of you are in a position to speak to that because I don't think you're the owners of the company. But is it something that you think your, you know, the company would consider going public, taking this? So on the to, to order his first order his first the conversation after. Yes, order his first hundred container, and, 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 and we'll see how you feel about losing some, getting some profit share, or losing some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for telling but us. Deborah, more let me quickly say we can be reached at 876 619 2836 or 28 or 40. Our Insta page is at KLCJM. Our Facebook is Kinson Logistics Center. And our, we can be reached by email, as Sharon mentioned, sales at KLC jamaica.com yes okay all right thank you so much once again a lot of interest in this topic